Hey guys, Chris Smith with The Blonde here. We're going to talk today about some troubleshooting stuff, uh, working with your your rectifier, how to make the brake work, and how that's going to allow you to shift and everything. So everything you start, you know, with your control knob, go into the brake position. After you call up a shift, it should start shifting. If it's not, there's a couple things you want to double check. The first is my brake work. And that's going to be controlled by this little rectifier here that's putting out DC voltage. Now for you guys with the 13, 15, and 19 inch machines, you're gonna be looking for 50 to 60 volts DC. If you're larger swing that, like you're 24 inches and larger, you're looking for 90 volts DC from your DC voltage. Now the easiest way to check that is you can, you can look at the, on the rectifier and find the DC side that's putting out. It gives you a voltmeter set it on DC voltage and check and see what you got. But you gotta have the machine in brake position. If you're struggling with that and you can, take your end cover off where your belts are covered and you'll see your large pulley with the four springs, spring loaded bolts on it. And if you can get to it, you can check it right here at the, uh, the tips where your power is going at. Another thing that could be also going on is maybe you are seeing the DC voltage, but your machine isn't braking. And that is because you need to reset your accessory pins to bring this plate in closer. Now, in order for this thing to work, you have to set the gap. And the gap is set with a little snap ring on this accessory pin or bolt, whatever you want to call it. And the max amount of gap you can have on here to be working is 18 thousandths. Now, certainly, yes, we want you to get it set closer, and that's just going to allow your brake to work a lot better. So say you've got good DC voltage and you're still not shifting. Next, we're going to want you to have to check your ZVN. Now, this is all if your hydraulic pump isn't coming on. So next, you might have a couple different zero speed monitors that send out the signal. These are the more common ones right now. You may have the old the brushes. Uh, with the ring on the drive pulley of the motor. And you can do this test with those as well. So what I would have you do is just get a wire. I made it out of a ground one just so it's kind of easier to see for the video. And what you're gonna wanna try to find on there is your normally open and normally closed wires. And what you're gonna do is just take the jumper and touch them to those two points. If it starts initiating shift then, your hydraulic pump comes on, then your ZVM is bad. Now the same goes for that pulley I was talking about with the brushes. You know, as your machine's running and the brushes are getting energized, it's opening up the circuit and it's waiting for your machine to stop to close that circuit to allow it to shift. Now I'll say it's doing all that, but you're still having, you're still, it's not shifting for you. So next we would go over to the servo shift and this is what the servo shift unit looks like. And I've laid out here all the components of the servo shift. What's inside, you know, you got your valve slide here. And essentially what you're doing, when you're turning that knob, this in there is in there like this, and you're turning that knob, and what I'm gonna have you look for is this center piece on each end. You'll be looking down, trying to look at each end here, and as you're turning that knob, you wanna see this center piece being turned, moving in and out. Now what that's doing, as you can see, I'll hold it up here. There's all these open holes. These are essentially ports that you're opening up inside both of these, these bodies that are allowing the fluid to go pass through and move it to where it needs to shift to. And if that's all working good, it may even, what could be causing it to be faulty or lagging is this could be cracked. Because what happens over time is the hydraulic oil gets hot and gets pushing through here and it cooks this nylon to a, a brittle plastic so it can crack. So if that's the case, you know, we would, we would first initially have you pull this servo shift out. You've got six machine bolts on each side, three long, three short on both sides of the unit. Then you just take a screwdriver and pry it apart. The biggest thing to be looking for is on here is this little spring and this detent rod that's kind of working with your valve slide and that's just what the clicks you feel when you turn your knob. So say you get it all apart, everything looks good with your valve slide. 
And next we're gonna be concerned about your piston. So in each one of these units is a long piston and a short piston. And that's working inside these units, allowing when the hydraulic fluid goes through to move into certain positions for the ports. You may also have a long piston like this as well. So what we would have to do is pull these totter pins here and take one of the bolts that you took out to uh, separate the two halves. Then you screw them in there into pins and you can drive those out. And once you do that, you can use this. This will come out. You'll also drive this pin out and knock that out because we'll want to check the pistons because on the, the originals, if your machine servo shift has not been rebuilt yet, your long piston is probably the nylon plastic as well, and that's what can become brittle and break. So that's why we've broken down, and now we make those out of aluminum just so they hold up and you never have to wear them again. So once you get them all out, you want to take very careful uh, attention on how they come out because these are set in certain directions depending on what your, your machine is. You know, they could be this way, that way, and vice versa. Now, if you screw up and you don't know, give us a call. We can help you out with that. The only thing I would need to know on each end of the service shift body is a stamped letter. Can you see this one has a, that's an F and that's a C. And I have a blue plate print drawing that I can pull and it'll tell me which way those pistons need to be in order for you to get your shifting correct. So, so you got it all together, you put everything together. Before you put it back in, you want to bench test it. The easiest way to bench test it is get you an air fitting that fits your air line and where you've taken out the hydraulic line, the feed line for it, just put you in an air fitting. And you don't have to get it real tight. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to air. Now, what's going to happen is this isn't a sealed system, so the air is going to be bleeding off at the same time. So just a heads up, our air compressor is probably going to kick on. It's going to be loud, kind of probably over, overturn everything I'm saying. You, know, you might not hear me as well, but just to show you what you need to do. And also what you do, you take the rod that you took out for your control knob, and you're just going to put it in the slot and turn So let's get some air and I'll tell you how that all works. Now, please do. <clears throat> right now it's set in the neutral position. So as soon as I hook air to it, this is gonna suck into the neutral position. And then as we're clicking, you've got your low, medium and high side, and then your other speed ranges. So only one piston is, you know, is gonna move every, every four clicks or three clicks, something like that. Cause it's just going from low, medium, and high where your other piston's gonna move on every click. So here we go. Wait. And right back to me. Now, like I said, the air the tractor on all that. Uh, another thing to keep suit up, I just ran into this with a customer, is that they, uh, your machine kept flipping out of gear. And they thought the hydraulic pressure would be holding things in place. This is not a sealed unit to hold that weight. That is done with their deep air volume. That I'll show in another video uh, later on, but that's what actually locks the gear in it later. Now, hopefully the air compressor even locks the gear real good. Another thing to keep in mind, another question I get asked about is, if I put a new valve slide in, how do I position it? It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but on the gear itself, I get that out of here, and the slide itself, there's a little hole drilled in one of the teeth, and there's two holes drilled on the gear. Now when you put that together, 
You want those three holes lined up like that, and that puts you in your neutral position. Okay? Uh, you guys can call and answer with any questions. We're here to help. Look us up at the wandlisa.com. Uh, reach out any time that we're here to help. Uh, another thing, uh, we are offering a 10% uh, uh, discount on all machines right now. Uh, and we're also bringing a part sale as well. Uh, so please, if you guys got any questions or you want to reach out about a new machine, uh, look up, you know, theblondeusa.com and give us a call. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.